In an attempt to recreate Games Workshop's basing for their Arbites models, I came across my new favourite scheme for my miniatures. I think these bases read nicely as tarmac or at least a futuristic urban environment. I'm going to show you how I made and painted these bases so you can try it for yourself because as much as I love my brown wasteland bases, it just makes more narrative sense for some factions to be found in or around a city. If you want to skip around, I'll leave time codes in the description. Drop a like if you find something of use here and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see if I ever make a video that isn't about basing. We're going to be using the texture on the top of Citadel bases to our advantage here. So the amount of basing materials involved are pretty minimal, but to better sell the idea of a living world, I like to break up the surface by scoring lines into it. To do this, I take a metal ruler and this all-like spike I found in my toolbox. I hold the ruler down firmly on the top of the base, then score a line along its length. I run my tool back and forth, applying a reasonable amount of pressure till I am happy with the result. If your ruler slips, there's no need to worry. The initial line should be more than enough to act as a guide if you need to work on it further. Scraping the plastic in this way can leave debris along the scored line, but this can always be blown away or scraped off with the point of a hobby knife. These finish lines should make the surface look like slabs or some kind of sci-fi tarmac alternative. I don't do it on all bases though, purely to keep the bases from looking too uniform when together. If things are popping off enough for two 40k factions to be duking it out, I can't imagine that a city will stay pristine for long. So I think getting some debris on these bases will be a nice way of mixing things up. On this selection, I used shards of a Prosecco cork I shaved off with a knife. Some rough brick shapes I cut from a thin sheet of MDF, and also a few cherry-picked clay cat litter rocks. When using these materials, I generally aim for pieces with some straight edges. This is to further reinforce the idea of a mass-produced urban setting. These large bits of debris are then fixed to the base with superglue. I grouped my bases together when I did this, just to reassure myself I was varying them enough to set each one apart. Random chunks by themselves look awkward, so I attempted to remedy this with a little texture paste. I smeared a little around the bottom, and will paint this to look like smaller debris that has settled around them. Don't be afraid to leave a large percentage of your base without anything extra on them though. I went over the top when I did this initial batch, and decided to throw five more plain ones in, just to balance things out. We can still add some subtle variety to these vanilla bases when it comes to painting, which is where the majority of our effort will go. With these simple bases ready for paint, I primed them with a black spray. I didn't have any Chaos Black, so I used this can of High Coat Matte Black Primer, if you're interested. I sprayed a little heavier than usual to ensure I got good coverage. I'm not going to apply a traditional base coat to them, so this heavy spray is just to save time. Most of this primer will get covered immediately with our next step, which is to heavily dry brush the top surface with Corvus Black and a pretty chunky brush. This picks out the texture of the top well and starts to establish a variety of dark tones. The difference is subtle at this stage, but the next two steps make a big difference. I now mix a little warm off-white into the Corvus Black. I'm using Ivory from Vallejo Model Color, but use whatever you like. Wraithbone is probably the closest to Citadel equivalent. I dab a little black onto my card, then add Ivory until I have a color that I'm happy with. We want the color to be a step up from Corvus Black, but not too light, as we still have further to go. Now dry brush the base again, but slightly lighter, picking out less of the texture and make sure to hit the edges of the base harder than the rest to create a highlight around the rim. Finally, we do one last dry brush to finish the texture. I just increase the amount of ivory again, getting an even lighter shade. I can't really give exact ratios, but just go for whatever looks right when compared to the two previous stages. This time, we dry brush lighter again. I hit the edge to enhance my previous highlight, but just lightly drag it over the rest. There is much less back and forth this time. I just hit an edge once, rotate the base and move on. Don't obsess over neatness too much. As you can see from the state of my scrap of card, multiple grays were used in both the second and third dry brush, but when the bases are all together, you'd be hard pressed to tell. You could definitely leave it here with the bases, and on a few, I definitely will. But for the majority, I'm going to make them look a little less plain with some road markings. Just like before, straight lines will be used to really emphasize what environment these small bases are meant to represent. I do this by taping off areas in a variety of simple shapes, like lines, broken lines, and hazard stripes. I've used electrical tape carefully cut into strips in the past, but I decided to treat myself to some 3mm Tamiya masking tape for this batch. Try to keep strips of tape running parallel, so the lines look like they have been painted uniformly. Make sure the tape is stuck down well too, to stop stray paint finding its way underneath. If they don't turn out perfect, don't sweat it though, we can compensate for this later. The majority of these markings will be white, so I start with some Celestra Grey 
to establish the initial color. I take a blob straight from the pot and then carefully stipple within my taped off area. Don't aim for perfection here either. I deliberately leave occasional parts where I don't go right up to the tape. Quite often areas that would be more challenging to paint with precision. Once the tape is removed, they should look like paint has either worn off or was not applied fully originally, both of which add to the realism of the base. Just like the tarmac, we are going to bring some texture into the painted lines now. So take a pure white of your choosing, mix it with your celestial grey and wipe off the excess. Now run your brush carefully over the celestial grey, letting the paint catch the raised detail again. Then repeat with some pure white, being even more gentle. Once the paint has had time to dry, carefully peel off the tape and enjoy the results. You could always leave this until you finish the next section, but I like to take the opportunity to reward myself whenever possible. For the yellow road markings, the process is much the same. Start by stippling towel light ochre, remembering to leave those weathering patches. Overbrush with some Avalon Sunset, picking out that texture. Then mix an off-white like the ivory from earlier into your Avalon Sunset and repeat, but a little lighter. If you wanted to shade the stripes at all, I'd recommend a glaze of some Iandin Yellow or Reichlin Flesh Shade. I find shading with these colors on yellows tends to give great looking results. With the tape removed, things should really be coming together now. All that remains is to paint up the extra details and spice up these bases with a couple of little effects at the end. I'll power through the rocks and dirt I shall probably have your own method and I'm not going to do anything too revolutionary. I just base coat the rocks with Dawnstone and base coat the dirt with Carrick Stone. Then wash the rocks with Nuln Oil and the dirt with Rattling Grain. Don't worry about them mixing a little in the middle, it won't do any harm. Now add some rough highlights on the rocks with Administratum Grey and mix in a little white for the smaller highlights. To finish the dirt, pick out raised areas with Brackarth Flesh and dots of Deepkin Flesh on the very prominent bits, if you're feeling sassy. The majority of these bases are now done, but I would like to take a few minutes to add some simple points of interest to a few of them. My favourite way to do this is the blood spatter I applied to my Space Hulk bases. I decided to do the same with Nurgle's Rot this time. Kept it to one base to see what it would look like. I'm not 100% sold, but the result is more than passable with my first Inquisition miniature attached. For the time invested, I think bits like this are definitely worth doing, especially on smaller warbands like Kill Teams. And that's it. I hope you like how these pretty simple bases look. The painting takes a little more effort than most bases, but with the time saved on the actual basing, I think it levels out nicely. Plan to use these theme bases for an Inquisition kill team and a Chaos Cultist kill team. And to be honest, the uh, Gene Stealer Cults Combat Patrol has been flirting with me a lot recently. I think the largely monochrome theme of these bases will work quite nicely for these factions. Please do let me know any ideas or improvements you've got for this basing scheme. I'd really like to hear them down in the comments below. And if you've liked this video, do all the normal YouTube stuff so you can get videos like this more often. If you want to see all of the miniatures that end up on these bases, Instagram is where I'm the most active, but I'll leave links to my other social media presences down in the description. Thanks for watching, enjoy your hobby, and be sure to check out these videos that YouTube thinks you will enjoy.